above all. You're through all. You're in us all. God bless forever. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout amen. Amen. He's in his 78th year. Born in 1919 and heralding from an early apostolic family. Our next speaker's parents were caught in that first wave of apostolic revival. They received the Holy Ghost 76 years ago in 1921. Himself baptized in 1927 and that means that not only his ministry but his manhood has spanned the entire lifetime of this united Pentecostal church and beyond. Preaching this same message for 58 years. You can perish the thought of capturing the essence of this life in a phrase. There are no superlatives that will explain Gerald Mangan. A man of passion, a man of purpose in the vanguard of revival. And I would only say this. Here is one among us who lives life in a full court press. Would you welcome to this pulpit tonight not only the bishop of the Pentecostals of Alexandria, but a prophet of the 90s to be sure among us. Receive Bishop Gerald Mangan tonight. May God bless you. You may be seated. and four. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, afflictions, necessities, and in distresses, as unknown, but yet well known, as dying, and behold we live, as chastened, and not killed. 1 Timothy 6 and 20. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. 1 in 3, 1 Timothy. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I 
went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war will entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Acts 20, 22, 24. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. My brothers and sisters, a lover of truth, one of the greatest men that's ever walked in shoe leather, in 18 years of pastoring this church, we have a key to each other's office. You can count on this time, this many times that I've walked into his office. You can count on that hand, the times I have walked in his office and not found him in prayer. Welcome my father, our bishop, and a lover of truth. G.A. Mangan. Jesus Christ and I love his gospel and I love souls that's answer for all your problems but I love you all so very much you may receive it one year ago tonight I was supposed to take brother Mike's place I felt like I didn't get across. Last year, the restoration of end time revival. I went home crying. Sister Mangan was staying with mom. She was alone. I curled up in the bed of crying. I said, no more preaching any conference because of time. I'm through. God let me get a good sleep. Three o'clock, he awakened me and said, get up. I want to talk to you. He said, you are getting mixed signals along with some others. He said, next year you're going to preach at the cause of time. I said, after tonight, no go. You're going to preach. I said, who's going to tell? The committee. I'm not. <laughs> For one year, I've been, I've been studying and planning for a message. <clears throat> God spoke to me and said, and I I asked not God not even let me up here. He said, I want you to give some years of experience. 
I'll remind you that 76 years ago, as a matter of fact, he said, I want to remind you that you are among the last of the first generation of Pentecost. How many in here has been in Pentecost 76 years then? How many here has been baptized? 72 years in Jesus' name you stand. How many has been preaching here over 58 years you stand? I thought we might have one or two standing here. told me when I was nine years old I preached on the streets and drew crowds God said I want I want it to go on record so this generation now might know what some of you went through with in the first generation we're now the third generation and as one of the brothers spoke today, said communism would fall in the fourth generation. God said, I want you to go down on record and let them know what it was those years. So I said, okay. So I started making plans. And as I made plans, I got everything out. Judy got it all typed up. Then it dawned on me. I didn't want to be misunderstood. I told Judy to staff, I'm through. I'm not going to give it. And Brother Anthony, Brother Anthony didn't even know I, I was supposed to give it. I'm not going to give it. I'm going to back out. And I did. And I'd have backed out now if I could have. Not, I didn't want to get up here tonight. I didn't want to. But he said, I want you to let some history know. I want this generation to know that this can be lived and protected 76 years. And if you the one of default, there stands a witness tonight. God said, I want you to guard the truth. Six months ago, I found this book. I don't even know the, or don't know the writer. I don't know the author. I don't know who even wrote the book. But I think, I feel, is something of his concern for the future of the gospel and for the, you know, the generation to follow whose responsibility is to guard it and pass it on. That's what I want to talk about tonight. The guarding of this glorious apostolic truth. So when I got to thinking, well, well, I'm not going to do it. Three weeks ago Friday, Three o'clock in the morning, got awake. I didn't know what to say. Got awake to me. I was caught away in the spirit. And I stood with Jesus. And I said, Jesus, tell Paul and Peter to come over here. I got a message for them. I want to tell you what that message is before I leave here tonight. I got a message for them. For it says from three o'clock in the morning, 
till two in the afternoon. I didn't move from that place. I believe I almost should know and recognize the Apostle Peter when I get up there. I was so close. I've never had experiences like this in all of my life. There was a generation that arose in Egypt who knew not Joseph. My text is unknown, yet well known. Unknown soldier, but he's well known because he was in a battalion. He fought for a cause. He fought for a purpose. He might be unknown to some, but he's known to others. And known to Almighty God. There arose a generation that knew not Joseph. They didn't know his dream. I had a dream. They didn't know about his dream. They didn't know how to carry on that dream. Lost out. Plunged them in the worst slavery ever been in all of their life. Because they didn't know anything about the dream. I don't know about you, but I live this dream. Not in day. I live this dream night and day. It's my dream. I live by. They didn't know it. They lost out. In the first generation of this church, there rose a generation after Jesus and after the Apostle Peter and after the Apostle Paul. There rose a generation after them that did not know the dream. Didn't know the beauty. They lost identity of Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, holiness. They lost it and plunged the world into the worst darkness it's ever been in. I don't know about you, but I I'm going to guard the truth. We're going into the fourth generation. Will the fourth generation know anything about 19 and 21, the 19 and 30s, the 19 and 40s, and the 19 and 50s? They knew nothing about what we went through with. The Lord said, I wasn't going record. I didn't want to do it. I never did want to preach in another. But God said, you got some guarding to do. You got a tomb. There's some dead fellas. I don't know. I never met Apostle Peter. I never met Apostle Paul. He's unknown. But yet, he's well known. a mystic gospel. Nor is a myth, nor is it something of a fantasy. God of the truth. I realize how important it is for me to guard it. I'll lay this foundation and I'm going to get at it. Jesus gave the apostle Peter the keys. Not just for a few days. To open the door of the Jews and Samaritans and Gentiles. And then God called the Apostle Paul into this glorious truth on his trip to Damascus. And God trained him for three years to be the 12th Apostle to the Gentiles. And but before, before the Apostle Paul would preach one word and go into full-time ministry, before he did it, he went to the old guard, the Apostle Peter. For 15 days, he stayed with him. And after 15 days, he wrote that the, during that time, Peter and Paul laid down the military strategy for this 
dispensation. And he said, though we end up this way, though we are even a little angel come a flipping down and preach any other gospel to you, let him be accursed. He was going to guard it and he's going to protect it for it was the power and the glory that brought the plan of salvation. He's going to guard it with his very life and anybody else is a curse that don't guard it. I love it. I love it. I've loved it for these 76 years and I'm going to keep on loving it. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, United States military active under guard who will represent the old guard guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, Most audibly, he said, Do you think it's more important to guard the American way of life, this unknown soldier, as wonderful and as important as it is? Is that more important than we guard this? soldier, the inscription, here rest in honor, glory, an American soldier, known but to God, unknown yet well known. Guards are changed every half hour, depending upon the season, every one hour or two at the hours at night. The change of the guard is an elaborate and precise military ritual to be a tomb guard takes skill and an impeccable military record keep your skirts clean and most importantly a strong desire to be a part of old glory. In the past, guard trainees who made a mistake had to do 21 push-ups for the unknown soldier. That's how important it was. A guard shift is 24 hours on and 24 hours off. And his office spends his day's training. While guarding, the sentinels remain under complete concentration. Try to get his attention. The President of the United States couldn't get him to talk. Concentration. Marching, marching 21 steps. Turning to face the tomb for 21 seconds. Turning to walk 21 steps down the black mat. 
The 21 steps and 20 seconds are meant to reflect the highest military tribute. The 21 gun salute. To be a guard of the, un of the unknown soldier is a highlight of one's military career and takes enormous skill and knowledge and desire and all guards are volunteers. Are you a volunteer? Here. Nobody could skip to me in the subject here. I preached on the streets at nine years of age because I love the truth. One of the most important things that a sentinel must learn is a sentinel's creed. The creed expresses all the values and desires of the guard of the tomb of the unknown soldier. My dedication is to the sacred duty. I don't believe anybody's listening to me. Do you think for a minute I'm gonna let him get ahead of me? I haven't these 76 years. Now what makes you think I'm gonna do in the fourth generation? Dedication to this sacred duty is totally wholeheartedness in the responsibility bestowed upon me. Never will I falter. And with dignity will remain perfection through the years of diligence and praise and the discomfort of the elements. Ten below zero they march. Rain or shine they march. Are you just a fair weather preacher? And all the discomforts of the elements, I will walk my tour in humble reverence to the best of my ability. It is he who commands the respect I protect. His bravery that made us so proud, surrounded by well-meaning crowds by day. How many have ever seen the tomb of the unknown soldier marching? Millions go there. Alone through the thoughtful place of the night, this soldier will be honored. Glory and rest under the eternal vigilance. I must. Do you think for a minute I will let them do something for the beautiful American way of life and me be a slouch with this? Yeah. Come on. If they're going to guard it, he's not going to get enough out of me. I've been a guard in 76 years. Do you hear me? I know you want to talk, but you hear me, don't you? Right. I've been God in 76 years. Now, now, he's, he got cleats on his heels. I got cleats on my heels. What? You're okay. You think 
I'm going to let him get ahead of me. I'm going to march if it rains, shines, fair weather, good weather, ups or downs. I am going to march. the truth. My pastor daughter is here tonight, Faith Barnaby. Her daddy baptized me in St. Joseph River 72, almost 72 years ago. She's here tonight. I grew up in that church where my dad is elder for years there. And as I was marching for a little kid, a long game a never die doctrine. Look over here. Not this guard. He don't look this way. None of these things move me. None of these things move me. Neither cut on my life dearer than myself. The next doctrine. That faces us growing up with social purity. So you got to be one stay upstairs, one downstairs. Social purity. You think I'm going to let that bunch get my attention? I'm like him. Matter of fact, how come you? How come you garden? The guy dead. It's a graveyard. Nobody around. You can kind of compromise a little bit and kind of don't have to walk all that much. Can't you talk to me? President could he could get you to talk to him. But let me hear what you're thinking about it. I am first guarding a cause, the cause of a free people remaining free. Second, I am not just guarding the unknown soldier in that tomb, but rather brave men and loyal warriors who freely gave their lives for their homeland, who spent themselves preserving the honor and defending the cause of freedom. Third, I am guarding the message of that cause and of those that gave their lives for it. <laughs> Unknown, yet what I stand for is known. Well, Noah, I'm not through yet. I know you can't talk to me. You're not allowed to. That's part of your discipline. But I want to know why you carry that loaded weapon 
You got bullets in it. Why do you carry that loaded weapon when nothing but a tomb? Other ghost? Why do you why do you carry it? This weapon is loaded in case some vandal or enemy would try to deface, mar, injure, bring reproach, or desecrate this tomb. For this cause, I have a loaded weapon to defend this tomb. Let anybody try to desecrate what Peter stood for. What Paul said. Let anybody try to desecrate it. Bar it. On it. 76 years I've seen some pastors that failed. But none of these things moved me. I kept it going on. Then next came the uh, school of prophets. I said, Mom, that woman that came down from Chicago that's living with us is a devil. Huh? Ah, yeah, you shouldn't talk like this. How you wait and see. Then I got to be careful because and so We had a family that was unstable with water out of my daddy's church. And that gal took them away with them. I didn't look the right and I said, didn't I tell you? I said, didn't I tell you? Then as I the marched along, through the years came along the latter rain. Woo! You ought to see it. I don't look to my left. I don't look to my right because I'm on duty. I'm dedicated to a purpose. I don't look to my right or left. I don't care what you've got coming up. I've got a duty to guard the truth of the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. Baptize the best one they had. Oh, but come over here. Look what we got. I don't look that way. Nothing will move me. None of these things move me. I don't care what you do or what you don't do. I'm talking about 76 years marching for the truth. I have been ridiculed. I've been made fun of. One preacher said, Sister Mangan runs down one aisle and Brother Mangan down the other aisle. I mean, we had one aisle. <laughs> Part of the reason why that fellow in Alexander has got this and that is because he is a liberal. Listen, if you don't want to go liberal, stay away from the liberal crowd. I never look to the left. I haven't seen anything on the world horizon that would make my eyes off of what Jesus did. Peter did. And Paul did. I will have nothing. So come up with anything you want to come up with. 
Hey, buddy, what about it? We talk to me? Try to get him to talk to you. You go to that two men on shoulder, try to get him to talk. He won't talk with you because he got a duty to guard. A nun so in a tomb, he's got a duty to guard it. But none of these things will move me. Neither do I count my, my life dear unto myself. Because I have a purpose. I have to guard. I have to march. I have to be ready. I'm going to go just a little bit ahead of time on this. I don't know what time I took it or what time it is. And I don't look to right or left on time either. said I was shipwrecked night and day to the inserting this often often perils in the water perils of the robbers perils among my countrymen perils by the heathen in the city in the wilderness of the sea perils amongst false brethren and somewhere I got down here somewhere where it said, even they would rise up among you. But take heed. I want to take it a record this day that I'm marching. I'm God of this truth. For know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves, Men shall arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember. By the space of three years, he's, now he's at Ephesus. And that's the last time he's going to be there. Goodbye. Farewell. I'll never see you again. But when I leave here, who will take up that guard? And who will march? Who will march for me? Yeah. Timothy? <laughs> you stay down there at Ephesus. And you teach them. But they teach no other doctrine. Remember by the space of three years, I warned you, not a day. Timothy, look straight ahead. Don't let false brethren, don't let school of prophets, don't let any false doctrine get your attention off of the unknown too. <laughs> Peter's unknown to me, but he's well known in scripture. The Apostle Paul is unknown to me, but yet he's well known because I'm guarding his dream. I'm guarding his vision. And keep it on according to his divine holy will. Said, so why don't we, if they, the sentinel walks and guards his, why don't we walk sentinel and guard these eternal truths that Jesus gave us and the Apostles the faith is once delivered to saints and the martyrs. Guard, keep marching on. Keep marching on. I don't look to the left. You see the weapon on my shoulder? When anybody desecrates the truth, Now you younger 
you a whippersnappers? Don't know what I went through with in the 20s when a drunk hated us. They hated any kind of demonstration. They hated anything, miracles or healing or anything. 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. You've got a lot of this bit is handed to you, but brother, we fought it. My daddy routed egg there, bringing that work in, going through all of that. What are you going to do? I bought a hand as a car would be the number L of one of these things. On there. there you go, take off. Anthony, brother Anthony said, "Daddy, about the monitors you got to hear the son. I was preaching a tent before you had monitors." <laughs> Six years of Pentecost without a flower, without stopping, without looking that way or that way or that way. <laughs> Peter said, Brother, I'm going to soon die. There's going to be a change of guards. I'm going to put off this tabernacle. I'm going to die. But he said, I want you always to keep these things in remembrance. These things in remembrance. This is just a it's just about the time to change guards. I forgot to tell Brother Anthony to put down there. My text was the changing of the guards. So it's about time to change guards. So I would better take on another role for just a minute. If you will bear with me, I got to take on another role. You see, I tried to join the Navy three times in 19 and 38 because I love my country. Before the draft or World War II was ever heard of. I love my country, but I love this better. Oh my God, I gotta put, put another pocket. Bundle quick. Y'all get to see it for a little bit. See this weapon. Yeah, okay, he handed it to me where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Let me see if this weapon is like that weapon. <laughs> this is an M14. <laughs> There's no bullet. In this. It's loaded. It's loaded. I forgot. Let me inspect your uniform. I want to see if you've got the same uniform on that he's got. Let 
wouldn't expect your gospel shoes to. Let me expect to see if you both got the same shoes, same trousers, same coats, same M14s, your same weapons, your same helmet. Put on the whole armor of God. same gloves, the same weapon, the same everything. I want you to know what I'm a garden hasn't changed one bit. We still got the same gospel shoes. We got the same uniform. The same uniform. And the same weapon. I've got the same weapon that the unknown Peter had. I've got the same weapon that the Apostle Paul had. So, my friends, for 76 years, I'm marching on. Now look at the right, north to the left. Say, so how about the present system? Charlie, or whoever they call it. You see, my friend, I've been through it, a lot of it, Social Security and all, Social Security, all that, I've been through it. Do you think I let this modern bunch of thou that claims to have the same Holy Ghost about, you think I let the buddies get my attention? I said it before there's ever born a lot of them. They get your attention they want to. But I've got a weapon against anything. And the only weapon to work is this weapon. I wonder who's going to guard this truth. to make your calling and your election sure. A lot of you fellas don't know how to snap your heels. Like, I got things on here, but they don't snap real good. <laughs> but I know how to hold this. The weapon. Who's going to guard? I'm set, Paul said, for the defense of the gospel. Before he died, he said, Timothy, you be a good soldier. Know how to get up here, get ready to make a turn. Click your heels. And turn. Be a good soldier. Know how to use your weapons when somebody would deface this truth. You got ammunition. Anybody in that sort, they see anybody out there, they have a right to shoot them. You got a load of ammunition here. Don't let nobody toy with your brain or your mind. Don't let nobody toy with something that somebody died for. I'm guarding, I'm guarding the tomb. I'm guarding Peter's tomb. I'm guarding Paul's tomb. Paul said, I'm set 
for the defense of the gospel. How carefully Paul guarded that tomb. Things the Lord revealed to him. He motivated the new guard, Timothy. He motivated the new guard, Titus. That's what this book says here. Guard the truth, Timothy. Guard the truth, Titus. Are you younger fellas, younger people, going to let all that? I'm not going to even give, either call their name, let anything draw your attention that way. Keep your eyes on the truth. Keep them marching. Keep your eyes to guard that truth. He motivated new guard. He did it. Many are committed to anything but Calvary and the apostolic message. Timothy was taught to teach faithful men. He said one thing mattered. They were alone against the world. They were alone against the world. But they marched on in jail, persecuted, shipwrecked and false even to some of their own Paul said even some of my own kids matter of fact he said one place in Luke said Luke Demas said greetings then I find a fourth chapter this is the time of my departures at hand that's what a good fight I have finished my course. In jail, false brethren, false doctrine, nothing moved him. You better keep your mind and eyes in the book. This is our weapon against everything. I think going 50. Well, I'm quitting. No, go. No, I can't quit. You think? You think I could tell you 76 years in 50 minutes? <laughs> I finished my course. Hey, Paul. Demas left him. And he preached with him. Demas left me. So what? It didn't stop him. We have... Back in World War II, what was called draft dodgers. I hope we don't have any Holy Ghost draft dodgers. That dodge preached in holiness. That dodge preached in the name. That dodge preached in the weapons that God gave us. Then we have, back there they had card burners. Burned their military card. Burned their cards. I hope we don't have any card burners. Demas was a card burner. He left this. He quit guarding the tomb of the unknown, but yet well known. He quit guarding it because he started looking to the left. You start letting all these so-called jiggers and jivers and jewers and jivers and so-called tongue truckers and all get your attention. You, your elevator, has quit running. <laughs> I don't care if Demas does burn his card. I was a draft dodger. I hope we don't have any dodgers in here that dodge preaching the truth. That dodge preaching what the unknown to what Peter and Paul preached. I, I, that was just my introduction. Oh, yeah. 
Americans come to Arlington to watch. How many would come to that tomb if it wasn't for? Be a good soldier. come to this shrine if they didn't have the guard. You know why? They find the honor guard there. And it's precision. Yes. How many come to your shrine? How many come to your shrines? And if they do come to your church or your shrines, can they see? That's right, man. Can they see that soldier that's preaching what Paul preached and what Peter preached? You don't desecrate that tomb. You get your head blown off. here in a book that if you desecrate this doctrine and you bring a fruit on it and try to deface it and try to mar it, I got a gun that goes I inspected your gospel shoes. I inspected your uniform. I inspected your weapon. Everybody be seated a minute, please. You know, I put on that sergeant's garment and hat. I inspected him. May I inspect you? How many here are going to have on the same uniform that Peter had on, Paul had on? How many is going to have that same uniform? That march. got on that same uniform. They, they, don't, they don't sit down with that uniform on, they march. Yes. How many has that same uniform on? Yes. Let me inspect you. Let me inspect you. Yeah, but I got to say something down here. Okay. Let, let me inspect you. Do you still have on the gospel shoes? You still have the same weapon? Let me see your uh, uniform. Uh, yeah, it matches Peter's and Paul's. And matches mine. I've been 76 years. All right. How many of you won't let that guy get ahead of you? Guard the American way of life, but not guard the eternal life. How many is in here going to be committed to march for the unknown soldier? If I should die before the Lord comes and they bury my body out of force and law and my spirit wings this way in the heaven's paradise out of the gate I dance with angels I dance with angels I look over there there's my lover on the throne, that beautiful countenance, that beautiful Jesus. I look at him, and I run to him. I throw my arms around him, say, thank you for letting me live, no matter how long it is, upon the earth. I said, Jesus, 
You know what I'm going to say. You know all about it. But I have a message. Call the Apostle Peter over. Call the Apostle Paul over. I've got a message for him. Are you ready to listen? You know Jesus, I know you know so I don't have to tell you. Peter and Paul, I want you to know that we have some of the greatest and the strongest dedicated preachers, young and old, that's got the same uniform on that we had on, and the same shoes that we had on, and the same job. I want you to know that we have turned it into the hands of men that love Jesus' name, baptism. That love the Holy Ghost. That loves the holiness message. Peter and Paul, I just want you to know, and this, my friends, is what the Lord told me from 3 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I was with him. And I talked to Peter. How do you know the gospel will continue to be preached? I was given the keys, preached. The first message on the Feast of Pentecost was put in jail, resisted the Sanhedrin, preached despite threats on my life, broke tradition to extend the gospel to the Gentiles, and gave my life for the gospel. How do you know it will continue to be preached? Nothing left to itself stays the same. It either increases or becomes of no effect. What have you done to advance the gospel? Yes. Yeah, Paul, I, I, want, I want you to know too. I also am concerned Peter and I spent 15 days in Jerusalem confirming it. We laid out the strategy where the gospel would be preached to the world. I personally established churches to spread it. I warned them if they preached any other doctrine, they would be accursed. What have you done? to make sure the gospel will continue to be preached. How do you know? I'll tell you how I know. I inspected them a while ago. I inspected their attitude. I inspected their shoes. I inspected their uniform. I inspected their weapon. I inspected the helmet. They got on the same thing with maybe more zeal than we ever had. That's how I know. That's it. Come here, Brother Haywood. Come here, Brother Foss. Come here, Brother Gilgore. Come here, Pa. Popsy Gibson. Come over here. Come with me a minute. Come with me, Brother Norris. Come with me. I want us to look over the banners of heaven and see what's going on in planet Earth. As we all look, wow. They're preaching the same thing we preach. They got the same tone of voice. And they're preaching it just exactly like we preached it. And it made heaven rejoice. But just in case there'd be a compromiser down there. And they go by my tomb in Forest Lawn. I want my tomb to roar at them. I want my tomb to scare them half to death. I would buy 
by the grave of my old pastor. I went by the cemetery in June of my old pastor. And I said, Pastor, I said, I'm still guarding the truth. I went with my dear old daddy, got the Holy Ghost and preached it for many years. And I said, Pa, Ma, I'm still preaching the same truth that you taught me to preach. But now, the case rests in the hands of the fourth generation. I've tried to tell them about the first generation. It rests in the hands of the fourth generation. And to the fourth generation, I say farewell. Preach on. Guard the truth. And don't let the old guard the unknown soldier. Guard his great promise and his cause. And you not guard that cause. But until that day, I say farewell. And may the same gospel and the same truth reach the fourth generation. Farewell. Soon we'll come to the end of life's journey. And perhaps we'll never meet anymore till we gather in heaven's bright city. side of heaven as we struggle through this world and its strife oh there's another meeting place somewhere in heaven Oh, uh -huh.